Uh, my name is Dan Suter. I'm a professor of entomology here in the Department of Entomology. I have a joint appointment with the Center for Urban Agriculture. And uh, I work on pests of an urban nature. So things that get in your house, think of, uh, of termites and bed bugs and cockroaches and fleas and the list goes on and on. Things that get in your pantry and eat your food and uh, critters that get around your house and uh, things of that sort. So uh, I was hired 20 years ago to work with the pest control industry. I worked very closely with the, uh, uh, the folks in the pest control industry to provide continuing education to, uh, to that group. So we have a small research program, have a, uh, a training facility here on the UGA Griffin campus that has a, uh, it's kind of a half built house that uh, this is not it, this is not the picture you're looking at, but it's a, uh, it's a partially built home that shows pest control operators how uh, the different construction practices that they might run into when they're doing a termite control treatment. So we have a, uh, we have a bed bug house, we have a commercial kitchen, we have a, a home kitchen to show and train pest control operators on, on the various aspects of pest control. But, I want to talk today briefly about subterranean termites. And, you know, we're always amazed and surprised somewhat when we get termites in our house. And you're looking at why. <laughs> termites eat wood. And until we stop building with wood, never, uh, we're going to have the, a threat of subterranean termites in our homes. So, you know, you're looking at a home here that's being built with lots of two by fours and lots of wood that's close to the ground. And we're gonna do things around the outside of the structure that are going to entice termites. And then, uh, and then we wonder why we get termites after a few years. So uh, there's some things that uh, I'm gonna talk about here briefly to help you diagnose whether you've had a termite problem recently. So some of you that are listening, maybe from out of state, maybe not, um, not maybe, you, maybe you come from up north and, and, you're, and you're not familiar with with major termite problems. We have major termite issues here in the southeastern U.S. Uh, for several reasons. We have about six species of subterranean termites in, in Georgia. There's one in particular, Reticula termes flavipedes, that's the scientific name, or the eastern subterranean termite that causes uh, about, uh, probably greater than 95 percent of the problems for, for homeowners. These critters are called subterranean because they, they do live in the soil and they need, they need the moisture in the soil. So uh, they live in the soil, they, they never ever stop looking for food, and sometimes a home, uh, maybe they want to go nibble on a home and they find a piece of wood in a structure that uh, is uh, palatable to them and they start eating. They don't have it in for you, they're just looking for something to eat. There are multiple populations of termites around any structure in Georgia. We're, we're kind of in the, in the, what I refer to as the termite belt in the kind of the next slide. <clears throat> So years ago, a group of scientists got together and kind of drew some lines as to where they thought that the most termite activity was in the United States. And uh, region one there is what we generally refer to as the heart of, this, of the termite belt. So the darker the color here, the, the more the subterranean uh, termite pressure that you're gonna run into. So this is true for all insects, right? So if you talk to Elmer or, or Melissa, they would tell you that the diversity of species, a number of species, and the abundance of those species is greater in the south and southeast. We have tremendous, you know, it's 75, 80 degrees today, and uh, we have abundant rainfall, and we have nice temperatures, and that bugs really like that. So uh, the, the number of insects and their abundance is just greater in the south and southeast, and, and we're blessed in being right here smack dab in uh, the heart of Georgia, right here in the, the heart of the, the termite belt. Next slide. So here's the, the critter that does the damage, right? This is, you hardly ever see that. This. this is a worker termite. And uh, in a termite colony, you have workers, you have soldiers. And um, I'll show you some pictures a bit about uh, some other critters that uh, it, you need to be on the lookout for. But this is a worker termite. This is the one that actually eats the wood. So a termite colony, you might have four, five, six colonies of termite around a typical structure in Georgia. They're, they're subterranean, so you never see them. It's kind of like uh, a critter that lives in the ocean. You never see them, so you start looking for them. Um, but in Georgia, it's not, it's not uncommon to have three, four, five populations of termites. Those populations might be from 50,000 to 250,000, maybe half a million termites in each one of those groups that we commonly refer to as, uh, as colonies, right? 
So next slide. The, there are some things it, that you, as a homeowner, you need to be on the lookout for. And uh, we're, we are in the heart of swarm, what we call swarm season, what pest control operators refer to as swarm season. So a little bit about the biology of subterranean termites is <clears throat> at a certain time of the year, usually in the early spring, colonies will uh, promote the development of what we call alate termites or winged termites. They're, they're just swarmers. They're adult termites. The, the winged ones that you're looking at in this picture right here are adult male and female termites that are going to swarm. It's time to make, springtime is time to make a uh, new termite colony. So in, in any particular area, you might have multiple uh, termite colonies, different termite colonies all swarm at the same time. So it's usually punctuated by a warm day, usually starts in February in South Georgia, on into March and April into uh, Central Georgia and North Georgia, but it's usually a, a nice warm day with a, a nice light shower. And that triggers those termites to swarm. They fly, these are flying termites. And uh, what the reason for the, for the moisture is because it, moisture promotes termite survival. Termites are really quite wimpy. They, they will dry out fairly quickly if they don't find a moist place to live. That includes the workers in the previous picture that I showed you. But what happens here with these swarmers is they all swarm at the same time. They're not very good flyers, so a lot of them get eaten by birds, they get eaten by dragonflies, uh, they, they fly a little bit, they land, they lose their wings, and then uh, males and females will mate, and then those will start a new colony. And I, I would say 99% of them are, are eaten before uh, they even get a chance to start a new colony. Fire ants are major predators, and other ants are major predators on the on these uh, on these termites after they lose their wings. So they'll lose their wings literally within hours. They mate, and that's going to become the king and the queen of a new termite colony. So I bring this I bring this point up because if you have a termite, one of the probably the most important clue, the most obvious clue that you might have termites in your home is a swarm inside your structure. So these termites will fly to windows. You'll find, uh, you may come home one day, find a couple hundred dead termites on the floor, a bunch of wings and a windowsill, uh, you know, little black insects flying around. Don't worry, they're all gonna die. There's no, there's no, they're not gonna cause any harm. But what that is indicative of, a swarm inside the home is indicative of a more severe problem. If the swarmers, you don't have to worry about. What that indicates is that you probably have an active termite infestation uh, with workers that are eating your wood in the structure. It's very common to have termite swarms on the outside. You might find termites swarming from a stump or a fence post. Don't worry about that. that those, that's just a natural, a natural happening on the outside. It's just a natural biology. So, but recently, over the past couple months, um, we have been seeing termite swarms. So if you've had a termite swarm in your house, probably should contact a pest control company and come out and do an inspection and maybe a treatment. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> the, the other thing that you might want to look for uh, in, in crawl spaces or anywhere in the structure, as I said, termites are, they're, they're susceptible to desiccation. They dry out very easily. So they bring mud from the soil up into the structure at, for two reasons. That, that mud tube right there, is a hollow, it's a hollow uh, kind of a straw-like thing that the termites crawl from the soil into the structure and they're protected by, by this mud tube. This is a hollow tube. So if you find mud anywhere in a structure where mud should not be, that's another telltale sign that you have uh, a, a subterranean termite infestation. So you wanna look first for those alates and they only, the swarmers only come out at a certain time of year in the spring, but in, in the other times of year, you want to look for this, these mud tubes that might be coming up into the structure. So if you're in your crawl space and you start seeing some mud tubes coming up the wall, or you see mud on wood that shouldn't be there, uh, maybe it, it has a, a tube-like appearance like this. It protects the termites from, uh, from their primary predator, which is ants, but it's also 100% relative humidity inside the tube and, and it keeps them from desiccating. So they use that tube to migrate up and down between the soil and the and, uh, and where they are. Uh, next picture. <clears throat> a little bit about termite control. So, it, by the way, if you, so, if you have a, if you've seen either one of those uh, 
components of so swarmers or, or mud, call a pest control company and have them come out and do a, 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 an inspection. Even if, even if you haven't seen those, a really good time to get a, a, an inspection, many pest control companies will do this for free, is during the summertime when termites are most active. Right? So have them come out, they'll do a, a free inspection. It's not a bad idea to have that done once a year uh, during the summertime. Um, so companies can come out, crawl around on the inside of the crawl space and look on the inside a little bit and, and let you know if they find anything and that might look like a termite infestation. But I want to comment here a little bit about uh, <clears throat> this era of termite control that we're in right now. And, and we're in an era of termite control. I think the, the product selection is really good. Uh, there's a key year here, 1995, was the, the year that uh, the first termite bait came on the market. It was uh, Centricon, there are uh, another, another of, number of other competitive bait products that have come um, behind that in a, in, a, in, a, in a liquid and insecticide that has been come on the market here since in, in 2000 called uh, Fipronil. Uh, that is, has changed the game for termite control. I think we're, we're probably in a better place for termite control now than we were prior to 1995. And if you look at termite control prior to 1995, the way we protected structures was you had all that wood in the structure in that second picture I showed you. And we put a liquid around that structure that tried to keep termites from getting into the structure. Well, if termites are anything, they're very persistent. They never stop looking for food. And you might have a half a dozen of those populations around the outside of a structure. So uh, every once in a while there was a breach in that treatment and they, they got through that treatment, they got up into the structure and they infested the structure. We weren't really trying to kill termites before 1995. We were, we were treating the soil and we were trying to exclude them from getting inside the structure. Well, 1995, along came the first product that was actually meant to reduce the size of the population of termites that was around your structure. And we have a liquid that does that now too. So if you, have, if you assume that there is a certain probability of attack from termites on your structure, might be low, might be high, I don't know. What these new termite control products are designed to do is to lessen that probability by lessening the size of the foraging population of termites. So if you have a population of termites around your structure, maybe a colony that's this big, and they eat bait and it reduces the size to something that big, you've reduced the threat to the structure. Uh, fipronil does some of the same thing. So you have the, the general idea of termite control today is you're reducing threat to the structure, you're reducing the threat to the structure by reducing the size of the foraging populations that are around the structure. I, I kind of, when I talk to homeowners, I, I think of it as you're, in a, you're out in the middle of the ocean and you're in a rubber raft and you're surrounded by 15 foot great white sharks, right? You're surrounded by five or six 15 foot great white sharks. And you don't want them getting in your rubber raft. So you feed them something and that 15 foot great white shark becomes a three foot nurse shark. That's what we're looking at. What's what we're talking about when we talk about termite control today is reducing the threat, reducing the size of the foraging populations, you're reducing the threat to the structure um, at that point. So again, just to, just to summarize here, if you think you might, this is a really good time to, to call your local pest control company, uh, request an inspection, um, They'll come out, uh, kind of crawl around in the crawl space, do an inspection for you and see if there's any signs that you might have uh, uh, termite infestation. If you've had, a, if you've had a, a swarm recently, it's probably a good, good idea to call a pest control company, have them come out and do an inspection and probably uh, request some type of treatment. So I'll go ahead and end with the next slide. If you have information, your portal, your portal to UGA, if you're a homeowner and you're watching this, your portal into UGA is your county extension office. So your, your county extension agent knows everybody at the university. If you have a question on anything, they know who to contact at the university. So if you call that phone number right there, no matter where you are in the state, it'll put you in contact with your county extension agent. And if you have a question, we're gardening right now, everybody's vegetable gardening, some of these webinars have been about vegetable gardening, but if you have a question about anything, if, if your county agent doesn't know it, they know who to contact to get you in touch somebody who will be able to answer your question. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there and be happy to uh, answer any questions anybody might have about termites.